Hey, it's JC1424 once again with NASCAR Legends! And in this episode of our 70s season, as David Pearson, the Silver Fox, we're going to be running the final race of the 27 race season, the Texas 500 at Texas World Speedway. I don't think that's Texas Motor Speedway. I don't know if that track even exists yet. I highly doubt it. And I don't know anything about this track. But it's going to be a 62 lap race. And that leads me to believe this is probably a super speedway, because if it's a 500 and 62 laps, it's got to be a really big track. Um, I'm betting on there being two pit stops, m maybe just one. I have no idea. But last episode, we raced at North Carolina Motor Speedway. And pardon my explosive emotional breakdown in that episode, but I was correct. The game is retarded. It's just that I'm retarded, too. We already knew all this, though. So, um, let's... Take a look at the standings one last time before going into this final race. Yeah, we're 16 points behind Buddy Baker now. Because I was trying so hard to finish way ahead of Yarbrough and Foyt that Buddy Baker got around us and we just finished the back of the field. That was an easy win for us. And I threw it away. I, I Very, very lustful thinking. That was not a good decision on my part. So this time, let's bump into like one guy and win the race. Hopefully Buddy Baker doesn't do too well. This should be a high points paying race. I know that much. So go to track, uh, get into the qualifying session. Of course, it's already on easy setup because we've never raced here before. So I've never even fondled with this nonsense. We'll click that. Richard Petty's the first guy out on track with a 4365. Okay. So I think it's more of a, a Michigan-esque length track. Which is interesting because I won the first Michigan race and then we finished like third or fourth in the second one. I don't remember. It wasn't too long ago. I am going to be the very last person to head out on track for qualifying. And Bobby Isaac takes the pole uh, just before we head out there. He's got a 43.15. Oh man, this is a big track. This is a, a bit bigger than Michigan or Auto Club Speedway, which used to be known as California Speedway, and is getting turned into a short track, I think, next year. Probably right after they run their last race. They keep trying to run the last race at the California, uh, the two-mile track. It's like uh, pandemic things and whatever the hell else is going on. So, our first lap, we should be up to speed. I do have to get off the, the gas and tap the brakes a bit going into the corners. So this ain't gonna be no stupid Talladega nonsense where if, just like if some short tracks, the tires wear down and then I have no pace anymore and AI just keep passing me. And I took the pole on the very first lap. Okay, let's have one great send off. I'm gonna dive into the apron and destruction. And we got the pole by 0.9 seconds, almost an entire second I, I get this pole by. But uh, Bobby Isaac, he was always the guy starting first whenever I couldn't. and then. I think he won at least one race. I don't know if he got to two. I don't know if anyone ever got to three races. I haven't looked at the wins column in a while. But Buddy Baker is starting right at the top of the bottom half of the field. So I mean, if he stays down there, which I expect him to, we should have that position on him in the points. Kale Yarbrough is right about here. I'm not about to drop back seven positions so I can kick his ass. So we're just going to have to hope that I approach him in lap traffic or something happens to that liking. So... Get out of the qualifying, exit out of that, get to the race, and put it on A setup. One last time. Okay, get ready. Going green. I will say that that's something I'm going to miss from this game is being able to run the pace laps, although it's often defective in this game. And we're green. Not the best start, of course. Oh, you got Pete Hamilton trying to pass me. Um, he doesn't succeed, but Charlie Glotzbach does. D I swear, Charlie Glotzbach does not often run up front, but lately he has. I know Bobby Isaac always does, and Richard Petty always does. And then maybe Bobby Allison, and maybe Pete Hamilton. And there's some guys, they do one day, and then they don't the other. Oh my gosh, I'm having an amazing run down the back straightaway. I think that's just either the draft and or how much more straightaway speed I have on this difficulty in the game. Clearly this difficulty is high enough considering we've been struggling to get anywhere near the points lead. We try taking the lead on the top. He leads the first lap of the race. 
61 laps to go. Oh, we got Elmo Langley, gun for the lead. I'll just continue to lose more and more, more grip going into turn three, but I also have to keep letting off the gas a little bit more, more in turns one and two. And there he goes. I got the draft, some straightaway speed, and we're right back ahead of him. I'm gonna have to come in from the inside and really smash them brakes. And there he goes again. Yeah, they don't get tire wear, so I can't run that fast anymore. The fact that I'm running 1.4 seconds faster, I can't turn. We're in the front stretch and I can't turn. My car is flipping out. Okay, so we're just gonna wreck. And I can't stop spinning. I cannot stop spinning. So is that a caution or what? But let's go. Come on, car. Let's get going. And there's no caution lights on the front stretch. That, that's not a caution. My race is ruined. Well, now I don't know what to do aside from keep driving until a tire blows, then pit, or, or pit beforehand. Either way, I don't feel like we're going to even compete with these guys anymore, even though I'm the fastest guy on the track. I'm always the fastest guy on the track. Then there's stupid bullshit that's not fair that always gets in the way. I don't know if that would be a good idea. Because if I can make it two more laps, then I can pit on one stop. And, yeah, they're pitting. Yeah, I'm just driving around in circles. I don't know what the hell to do. That's it. We're out of fuel. Yeah, we're out of fuel. Okay, well, I tried to make it as far as I could, and I got wrecked. Because this car takes tire wear and the AI don't. It's the same fucking shit over and over again in this damn game. Do, 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 do. Just stay in the car. Tow truck is coming. Why do I need a tow truck? I'm in my pit stall. Oh my god, I hate this fucking game. Hang on. They got you hooked up now. <laughs> now there's a caution. Now there's a caution. I ran out of fuel, parked my car in my pit stall, and that's a caution. They're gonna take the car all the way around the track with the tow truck, even though I put it in the pit stall. As if it wasn't stupid enough that I crashed into somebody because I couldn't turn my car in the front stretch. No one else had that problem. They don't get tire wear, only me. I had the fastest car on the track like I did in every other 26 of the races that we ran this season. But it's always the tires or always the lap track. We're always an engine expiring because mine have to expire the most and have to restart the freaking race because I got fed up with that crap eventually. So I'm going to take a last place finish here at my home track. I don't even know this place exists anymore, but they don't race here anymore. And yeah, there's the pace car. So, yeah, we're not getting back to Buddy Baker. We'll be fortunate if we can stay in sixth place in the standings. We might just fall to seventh. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Take me all the way around the track, dumbass. Here's something I've never really showed during the series. You got the accelerate time thing. Because I'm not racing anymore. I have to finish last place. I have to be sad. I hate this game. Bobby Isaac's back to the lead. After all the pit stops. I guess he's winning this. Uh, Kelly Yarbrough is playing around 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th. So Bobby Isaac does indeed win the last race of the season. That was probably like his third win or something. It was a high points paying race. The ones that I need to win, I can't. And the ones that don't mean much, of course I can. Or I finished okay in like short track races, short races that don't pay anything. It's just so stupid. This the schedule and the tire wear and, and the AI, it's all just completely rigged against you. I don't know what other settings I could race on to not have this just be completely against me, aside from lowering the difficulty, which was already lower than it should be in the first place. Uh Kale Yarbo, sixth place. He had to finish last and me win to actually get to him. Buddy Baker finishes 10th. I just had to finish probably like four or five positions ahead of him to get that spot. And um, I'm guessing we still got 6th unless like whoever was in 7th wasn't too far away. 
Ah, Elmo Langley was behind us, and he was having a great run, so we fall to seven, which is essentially 14th in an actual full field. 14th, 15th, maybe 16th, I don't know, <sighs> which is depressing. Bobby Isaac wins the championship. I don't know if he ever actually did win a championship, but he took it from Richard Petty, and that is awesome. Richard Petty's overrated. Um, bunch of money, man. A.J. Foyt, Kill Yarbrough, Buddy Baker, of course. We end this off with him being 51 points ahead of us. That's still, like, less than an entire race worth of points. Now we got Pete Hamilton behind us. Neil Castles that I never paid any attention to. Wendell Scott finishes in the top half. And, you know, there's all of that. I, re I really wish that I hadn't been a total nutcase at North Carolina and just won that race like we did the first time we went to Rockingham. After I had dumped Kale Yarbrough, because that was to go perfectly fine for us. But then I went for A.J. Foyt, and, well, lap traffic was difficult to get around, like always. But, um, yeah, thanks for watching this NASCAR Legends series. I did not enjoy playing this game. And I'm going to play it again someday, because you're going to want me to. It races all the different drivers at all the tracks for, like, you know, one single race. I don't know if there's any tracks in this game that we didn't race at in the season. That maybe, like, fantasy tracks, or real tracks that weren't on the schedule. I don't freaking know. Wait a second, um... Who haven't? Yes, Bobby Isaac, that was his third win of the season. The most wins anyone else ever got was two with Pete Hamilton, two for Bobby Allison, two for Dave Marcus. I can't believe Richard Petty only won one race. I won ten races. So I might be seventh, but I won ten races. And I could have won ten more in this 27 race schedule. But, um, yeah, well, one last thing. This is the last video being recorded in this setup right here, moving all my shit to my house. Now that all that's ready to go, all the display is um, set and ready. And then, the, well, the last videos you'll see in other Let's Plays, they'll be coming up this weekend, of course, with the Scooby-Doo as well. I think that probably just came out yesterday, maybe. And uh, I think this weekend, uh, the, the first episode of The Chase in NASCAR The Game Inside Line is going to be the first video recorded in that house. Because that's where I ended that stuff off, and it's, that's a weekend series. So, um, yeah, buy one of the JC1424 t-shirts. If you want one in the link in the top right of the video, I should remember to put it there. They're like $15 plus tax and the new ones actually come in eight different colors instead of just white because I couldn't get the background to actually disappear from that image. See you next time. That's that. And NASCAR Legends. Over.